Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio operator KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to look at an antenna design proposed by Dave Atkins, K4DRA. And he is uh, on the quest for a uh, omnidirectional dipole. Now first, let me tell you the best way to get an omnidirectional dipole. Put in a dipole up at one half lambda, one half of the wavelength. Okay, like this. And your radiation pattern in a circle here for this dipole will be at off the ends you get the full radiation pattern. And then here it's about minus 3 dB. This is a dipole over ground. Well, that's not a real good circle, is it? Okay. But see, it's about 3 dB down here, whereas it's uh, full strength over here. Um, so off the ends is your off the ends is your null, and that's right there. Coming straight out like this and going out like this is this direction here and here. In other words, if you just put up a dipole, you're pretty close to that already. Now, what would happen if you wanted to get even closer to omnidirectional? Well, put up a pole, half wavelength, and make an inverted V. This angle here should be greater than 90 degrees. Otherwise, the two pieces of wire start to act like they're transmission lines, okay? Because they're so close, they affect each other like they're transmission lines. You want that to be greater than 90 degrees. So you attach this to something that's seven foot high. And the reason I mention that is because it's real easy for some person to come walking by and hit their neck on that uh, antenna. You can really hurt somebody doing that. Um, so I have some smaller trees and I connect it to the trunk of the tree, the part that's not going to move in the wind. And then for this, I'll use like uh, two pieces, um, alum not aluminum, chain link fence, top rail. Uh, that's a real cheap way to build. Or you can use a painter pole or whatever you do. You're going to have to guy it with rope, okay? A UV resistant rope, and this will stay up for a long time and you probably feed it in the middle that's fine you can actually feed it at the end to an end fed dipole this way too a dipole is a dipole is a dipole doesn't matter where you feed it okay uh, the reference station antenna is the mfj 2010 which is an off-center fed dipole um, that gives you some benefits and advantages okay so that's how to get a nice omni now, you suggest building a crossed dipole. This is looking down from the top, okay? So he's going to put a dipole here, and it's, this is a quarter wavelength, of course. On this side, here's the other half of it, uh, one quarter wavelength. And then he's got the other side. He wants to feed those together and then put a quarter wavelength there, quarter wavelength there. So each of these is a dipole, and he's got them fed this way. This you're going to have trouble with, um, I think, because, uh, you know, I haven't modeled it, but I think you might get a very strange radiation pattern out of that. But the thing is, you're so close to a different type of antenna that I would suggest going ahead and trying it. I'm going to just look at the feed point. Okay, so here is much, um, we'll, we'll use this, say it's a disc of plastic. Okay, so this dipole 
is fed as though it's an ordinary dipole. Okay, so if uh, your coax is like this, and the center is plus, and the shield is minus, we're going to do plus minus, okay? Now, let's bring in another dipole and do it crossways, like this. And uh, I'm going to take that out of there. Now, watch this. Here's where your coax comes in, okay? Now, cut a piece of coax to one half wavelength electrical. So you're gonna do, what is it, 490 times the, 490 times the velocity factor of the coax, which could be 0 0.66, 0 0.82, 0. whatever it is. You'll have to look this up to get that and then cut the electrical half length to that. Now attach this coax here, okay, and bring it right back and attach it to the other dipole. Okay, so this is a 90 degree phase change. So this dipole is being fed 90 degrees out from this one. Okay? What have you created? I'm going to tell you what you've created. You have created an antenna that is circularly polarized. Now, All waves coming down from the ionosphere, here's the ionosphere, when a wave hits the ionosphere, it's actually split into two waves, the ordinary and the extraordinary. And they come off the ionosphere at slightly different angles. They are circularly polarized. So this antenna will pick up circularly polarized waves that have come off the ionosphere, which means now it will receive linearly polarized waves, but that depends on whether the wave is in phase with this or not. Okay. Um, now, this, one of these ways of doing this will give you right hand circular polarization. And if you connect this wire to here and this wire to here, you get left-hand circular polarization. Now this is an experiment worth trying because all ionospheric waves are circularly polarized. And you've got the ordinary wave, which is the most common one to receive. The extraordinary wave is not necessarily as strong it's going in a different direction. And you'll be able to tell by flipping a little remotely driven coax switch here that pops this back and forth, uh, be either right hand or left hand, you can be able to tell whether it's the O wave or the E wave that, that you are receiving. And one of the nice things about it is if you're receiving the E wave of some DX signal, you won't hear the O wave, and most of the waves are the O waves, so they're, circular, they're polarized the other circular direction. And that will allow you to eliminate some of these just at the flip of a switch. So this is a very cool thing. I, it's reciprocal in that it transmits circular polarization. Now, um, we're talking about more up than out, more up. Um, and this is something you can build yourself. It's a little different wiring. Uh, it's a true dipole, which means you got the positive and negative halves, positive and negative halves, a 90 degree phase delay on the thing, and a switch, a relay, that either connects it the normal direction or flips it and connects it the other direction. You'll need to run a some sort of DC out to the relay to get it to do that. Um, this is something very few amateurs have tried. It is perfectly feasible to put one of these together yourself. 
okay? And it can allow you to reject waves that are not properly circularly polarized. Now, how do we receive these waves normally if all waves are um, circularly polarized coming off of the ionosphere? Well, simple. You put a linear antenna, okay, and as this thing turns around, by the way, it circles once a wavelength. That's true circular polarization. Something that is turning slowly, like with a satellite, that's not circular polarization. It's got a different name. But the, the wave, as it comes down here like this, is actually rotating around and, and continuing to rotate in a circle around coming down here. Okay, a linear antenna will pick up the part of the signal that matches this and then it will go down for part of the wave okay you lose half the signal okay in the linear polarization so you can get a 3 db improvement in it's half an s unit in uh, the signal that comes from the um, comes from the uh, the other uh, station now, this does not affect space wave, does not affect ground wave. Okay, only waves that bounce off of the ionosphere. Okay, that's a very interesting book um, from the League about propagation physics that uh, this talks about. It's written at sort of an amateur extra uh, level, but I think anybody uh, could figure it out if they don't mind working through a few equations that just show uh, how that works. But uh, I found it to be very enlightening. It was something I had never heard of or supposed. I knew what circularly polarized waves were and all that sort of thing. Uh, from my uh, graduate studies, but never in the practical sense, or how to build a simple antenna to receive either the O wave or the extraordinary wave. The ordinary, O is ordinary, E is the extraordinary wave. So there you have it. Now, I, I want to uh, mention to you a new feature of this channel. My study is filled with books and gadgets I've accumulated from having this channel, and it's time to thin the herd, so to speak. I'm announcing my second giveaway to hams in the USA, the USA because postage abroad is so expensive. The item to be given away this month is this. It's um, the myantennas.com NFED half wave 80 through 10 1K antenna. Uh, means it'll, it'll take quite a bit of power. Uh, and it's an antenna for 80 through 10 except uh, for uh, 60. Uh, it won't do 60. Uh, this antenna, I bought it with channel funds. I've done a video about it. I've used it on a number of occasions. It's a fabulous antenna. Uh, frequency coverage 80 through 10. Now on 80, it's high Q, so it only covers about the bottom 100 kilohertz, but that's the part that has FT8 in it. So there's another version of this available if you want 75. This version is the 80 version. Uh, the wire length is 130 feet, so make sure you've got some place to put this thing. Um, and it's a pretty high uh, build quality. We've got instructions right here for the thing. Okay, so um, here's how the giveaway works. It's totally free to you. Send a postcard, QSL card, or simple one-page letter by snail mail to P.O. Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. On whatever you send, make sure to include the giveaway number, in this case, number two. Your name needs to go on there, and call sign, and shipping address. Please also include your phone number in case I have questions. Please nothing else in the envelopes. Though if you want to send a picture of you and your station, I may be able to show those during the live stream. Electronic submissions will not be accepted. The drawing will take place on the live stream held 
on September 30th. Okay, September 30th. Um, now, note that I pay the book shipping, so it's all totally free to you. I hope to do something like this every month. Now, this is important. Note that after the drawing, all entries will be discarded and no information will be kept or transcribed. I'm not selling names, addresses, or anything. So there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel, you may do so by going to dcastler.com support and picking a way that you find most helpful. There's a Patreon link there too. Please also subscribe and click the bell and click like. Don't forget to comment. Until we next meet, 73.